Sacred Circle will continue. Bless you. Welcome back, everyone. I'd like you to meet Sharon and David McRae, who are with us as our guests this evening. And um, Frank is Frank and I are going to cast circle. And I should probably mention to all of you that um, this is Frank's first magical working since the stroke. And uh, what we're going to do tonight is cast our circle with what is a drop spindle. I don't know if you can see this, but it's a small piece of wood with a circle on the bottom. And um, the thread goes around here and up here. And Sharon's going to show us how to do this because I don't know how. <laughs> so we're all going to learn a little bit tonight about using a drop spindle. Um, as I told you before earlier, that we're going to do our circle, but we're also going to do a meditation. Um, so make yourselves comfortable. And as soon as we cast our circle and call our quarters, we'll be ready to do our meditation. Oh, and I should probably mention that on our altar, there's an absolutely wonderful apple pie. <laughs> that uh, Eric has made, and amazingly enough, the apple pie has made it through the setup of, this, of the stage and uh, getting everything all set up for everyone. And the drive from and, uh, and the drive from, from Milford, so uh, we're going to be partaking of that a little, in a little bit. Okay. Are you ready? We cast this circle in love and in light. Creating a space, time out of time, place out of place, where all things meet their equal and opposite in balance and perfection. This evening, our circle is open and particularly welcomes our ancestors and our guides who cross the veil to be with us this evening at this time of the year. So mote it be. Eric, if you'll start. Call upon the elemental beings of the north, of earth, to join us in the circle and aid us at this time of the year, the dark time of the year, in cutting away all that needs to be cut away within ourselves and exposing our shadow side that we may understand, accept, and release it. So might it be. So might it be. I call upon the elemental beings of the East, of air, and of communication. We ask for, the com for communication and wisdom from our spirit guides and from our ancestors, that we may be guided more surely along our path that we may experience illumination and inspiration from their wisdom to help guide us in the coming year. So won't it be. So much good. I call upon the elemental spirits of the South. Bring your fire into our lives so that it may burn away all of the unneeded, unwanted, and dark elements of our souls that we are trying to change and to better in this coming year. Give us the warmth and the power and the action of fire. So might it be. So, so might it be. be. I call upon the elemental beams of the West. Wash over us with your strength. Help us to face our fears so that we aren't drowned in them. So might it be. So, so might it be. be. Tonight for us both, I call upon the Lord and Lady of darkness, of change, of rebirth. Particularly fitting this evening, join with us. It has been a difficult year. There have been many trials, many tribulations. There's been much growth, many tears, but much joy. Be welcome here. We ask for your continued love and support through the rest of the winter. 
Thank you, Lord and Lady. So might it be. Some of the things that we have on our altar this, this, this evening, we have pomegranates, which is a traditional fruit um, used in some Wiccan and Pagan circles at this time of year because it represents the goddess Persephone who lives for part of the year above ground when we have spring and summer and at this time of year goes back underground to live in the underworld and guide souls to the underworld. So we have pomegranates here to represent her. We have purple candles this evening because I thought it would look good. Um, this candle is a spirit candle um, for our guides and our ancestors to uh, kind of guide them in. And it's a tradition in Celtic lands to leave a candle burning in the window all night on All Hallows Eve on Samhain that um, souls may find their way to the appropriate places that they need to be to kind of light their way and guide their way. And something else that we have is an apple. Um, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the apple in half. And I'm going to cut it in half widthwise so that you can see something wonderful. The inside of this apple is a star. I don't know if you're going to be, we're going to be able to pick, ah, there we go. There we are. Ah, <laughs> I can never do this. There we go. This is a star and it symbolizes rebirth. Life, death, and rebirth is a recurring theme in um, pagan and uh, Wiccan mythology and actually through the mythology around the world. And this star represents the bitter and the sweet of life. Also on the altar, we have this really kind of funky tree um, with a kind of a funny face on it. This represents our fears, and it's here to represent um, that part of ourself that frightens us, that part of ourself that we are uncomfortable with. And that's one of the things that we're going to be approaching in the meditation. We also have something else on the altar that I'm going to ask Sharon to explain because she was kind enough to provide this for us. There, is a, um, so there are some beautiful drop spindles on the altar, but there's also a beautiful statue of Ixchel? Ixchel. Ixchel. The a South American weaver goddess with her little weaver bird, the, the nest-making weaver bird, and this is a pre-Columbian antique spindle which I thought was appropriate to the South American theme. And she's a goddess of the moon. Many of the weaving goddesses are, except for Amaterasu from Japan. But she is also the goddess of childbirth and cutting away. Um, she will, she'll cut the thread of life at the end. And uh, we thought it sort of appropriate at this time of many threads in one's lives working together to include her. And hopefully she'll be able to help us sort through some of the unnecessary threads. And um, I'll just turn her around a little bit so I can see. She has a beautiful face. This is actually a reproduction of an original statue. It's one of the JBL statues. There we go. It's pre-Columbian. I nice, don't remember the date. And the nice thing is I didn't set myself on fire doing that. <laughs>